So, ons praat van sout van die aarde, God's disciples, salt of the earth, God's disciples. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about the, um, the meaning of salt and what Yeshua meant about the salt of the earth. Okay, ons gewete en duisternis, ons neem gereeld formele rituele aan met sekere leerstellings en ideologie. Um, in rituals, we usually do rituals as Jewish people we will do a ritual mostly and uh, in that we we learn uh, in what the word says and what we should do as Jews so ons is seker wanneer ons in lijn kom met die saak dat ons ons as verborge vir die uitdrukking van ons geweke gewete sal kenmerk ons angst echter drijf ons soms tot om etiese en sondige maniere om op te tree so what it means is that uh, sometimes we do practice what the words, uh, rituals give us to practice in the spiritual uh, side of, the, of, of things. But uh, sometimes, even if you practice what, what is a, a formal practice uh, and ritual in the word, then sometimes God will pressure you and then sometimes your anxiousness will, uh, will bring out some unethical things about yourself and that's the picture just because we, we do practices only and we don't really understand why we're doing it okay ons steek ons weg in groepe eerder as om uit te staan as individue dit lyk makkeliker om ons gewete te verberg as om te sê in die diep wonde van een mest in te staan it's, it's, it's easier for us to hide ourselves in groups uh, where we can be uh, hidden away instead of being an individual um, because it's it's easier for us uh, than to look into a wound uh, because we when we are hidden in a group then some somebody else can't see our wounds as well ons gewete vind troos by die groot skares op hierdie manier kan ons die gewete maklik afskaf Ons leef die lewe apart van individualiteit en verantwoordelijkheid voor die waarheid van Yeshua. We hide our truths in, in this uh, big groups so that it's easier for us to not be exposed to other people, our hidden parts and our sins. Wat verstaan ons van die waarheid, die waarheid van Yeshua? Joshua het gesê dat hy wat een goeie disciple is en om glo en tweedens in sy woord glo soos Johannes 1 vers 14. Now it's very important to know that the truth is that we should be a disciple who believes in Yeshua and in the word not only in Yeshua and not in the word or only in the word and not in Yeshua. In this we can see the Jews, some of them who are believers of Yeshua now, and some of them who have not yet reached Yeshua's yet. So they only believe in the Torah, and they follow all these rituals and ideologies and practices, but they don't really follow Yeshua in, 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 his, in his truth yet, as John 1 verse 14 says we should. By Christ, baie van die Christene word al verstaan in Jesaja 53 vers 5 dat hy praat van Jesus, Jesus as die Messiah as homself. Now, um, I put this part in because um, there's a lot of Jews that uh, who, who don't want to read um, Isaiah 53 uh, because they say it speaks about the Messiah itself. Actually, some of the Orthodox Jews, to them it's hidden away and they will not talk about this book because it speaks of the truth of Yeshua himself. Yeshua is baie liefde vergelijkings. Een van die wat ons weet van is die sout van die aarde, soos in Matthäus 5 vers 13 tot 20. So Yeshua speaks a lot about things uh, that, that seems to us is uh, without specific meaning it's like storytelling that he does so one of the stories that is that he tells is the, the one of salt of the earth in Matthew 5 verses 13 to 20 
En om soos die sout van die aarde te kan voortgaan in sy woord, bedoorig ons die studie van sy woord met genoeg kennis en weisheid. Dit is om dit wat mens geleer het te kan toepas, slechts dan ken ons die waarheid en verstaan dit. To be able to know what this salt is all about of the earth, and to know how to go forth in the word, we should be able to study this in the word and know its wisdom and its knowledge about it so that we can be proper disciples of Yeshua and the proper salt, the proper salt, salty, salty disciples. Vry dier die geest, sou die observatie wees dan as disciple dat ons nie ware vryheid in ons levens ervaar nie? Asof ons vryheid in ons gewoontes en ons skuldgevoelens, ons onvergevingsgesintheid ons nie ervaar nie, so mens maar een paar noem. We sometimes feel like we don't have freedom in Yeshua, if, especially when we have rituals and ideologies. It happens that you fall into a groove where you just follow along in, in a line and then it feels like you don't have any freedom at all. This is not what Yeshua meant by uh, having rituals and having ideologies. This is not what he meant by being a disciple at all. What he meant about being a disciple is to be free to study his word, have the knowledge and the wisdom, and to be able to go out into the world and to make other disciples of Yeshua. Ons ervaar nie die vryheid nie, omdat ons nie die waarheid weet nie, soos Hosea 4 vers 6 sê. En ons gaan ook nie voort met die gehoorzaamheid van die studie van sy woord nie. Ons kan hierdie beginsel ook sien in die Hebrewse letter Lamed. Die letter Lamed word beskryf as die kameel en die boodskapper. Now, we don't follow in, uh, in, in all, of, of all of the words that... Um, this, this, this is the knowledge that he gives us. In the Hebrews letter, wat ook vergelijk met Johannes die dooper, this letter is also one of the, the symbols of John the Baptist. As ons probeer om heilige levens te lei, waar die licht bied vir a donker en stervende wereld, moet ons dis studente word van die woord van God. Dit is so dat ons vry kan wees om die levens te leef wat, Christ, wat waarlik christelijk is. We should know the word of God because it gives us freedom in ourselves to be the messenger, to be the camel who carries other disciples, who carries this burden, this, this burden of the world, to be able to pray for other people, to be like John the Baptist. We learn this in the letter Lamed. Yeshua het a missie gehad. Terwijl ons die woord van God bestudeer, moet ons voorzichtig wees om nie ons studies net tot die Nieuwe Testament te bepaak nie, en te mis wat die Bijbel van Yeshua sy mysterieuse verskynsels en sy verloste lewe beeld nie. We shouldn't only study the New Testament. I know there's a lot of churches who likes the New Testament more because it speaks a lot more about Yeshua in, in, a, in a direct manner. Um, but in the Old Testament, we find that the Yeshua's messages were hidden and it's there and we should just search for it a little bit because Yeshua also said and, and spoke to the prophets about this and he said to the prophets and he said to them and to Moses and he said that in the scriptures of the Old Testament, it was spoken about him in Luke 24:27. Na sy opstanding het Yeshua met die disciples van die Tanaak in die Oud Testament sy missie verklaard hoe hy gesê het en aan die begin van die profete van Mooses en al die profete het hy aan hulle gesê wat in al die skrifte oor hom gesê is. Dit is nou in Lukas 24 vers 27. As ons oor oopgaan om Yeshua in die woord te sien, sal ons dan verstaan wat Sint Augustine bedoel het toe hy gesê het. Die nieuwe is in die ou vervat, die ou in die nieuwe verduidelik. The old in the new and the new in the old. That, that, that is what Sint Augustine said to us. Die ou in die nieuwe verduidelik. Die heel eerste letter in die oud testament is by, wat beteken woning. 
Now we find in the Old Testament that the first letter is an overgrown bait letter. It's it's called a B in Afri- in, in English a B a beer in Afrikaans, and it also means house. Now the reason why I also bring up the letter B um, is because the first letter B um, is in the Old Testament, and the last letter of the Torah is a Lamed. The first letter is a bait, and the last letter from the Old Testament is a Lamed. Together they spell they spell out Lev, which means heart. And in gesamen like bespel hulle dan nou lef en dit beteken hart. Lamed kom dan ook voor in die middel van die Torah en dis kan ons afleid dat die Torah die hart van God uitmaak. This Lamed letter is in the middle of the alphabet, it's in the middle of the Torah, it's in the end of the Torah and in the beginning of the Torah you will find bait. And together they, they spell out Lev, which means heart. And this is the reason why we know that the Word of God actually gives us the meaning that God's heart lies in the Old Testament, in the Torah. The Torah in this can us afleid the Torah the heart of God uitmaak. Net soos Yeshua aan sy disciples gesê het, skrifte oor hom geskryf as, back again to 24, 27 Luke. Mag God ons oor oopmaak om te sien waar die ware hart van die woord vir ons is. May the Lord open our eyes so that we can see the heart of God's word for us all. As ons diep in God's woord kyk, sal ons die Messia op elke blad sy sien. Now this is not a joke really, because in the first part of the, of the Old Testament, the Torah, in Genesis, you will find that there is a... a gematria, a numerical value that um, spells out Adonai, I am who I am, Yeshua Messiah. So it's all written, you can count it from the first letter to the last letter of, of Genesis, you can count the yod Hey vav Hey, which means Yeshua is Adonai, I am who I am. Okay. Om te leer van sy hart, laat Lamed is hierdie lang letter wat kop boe water uitstaan en hy staan ver boe die ander uit in die alfabet ook. Aan die licht van die feit dat hy in die kern van die Hebrewse alfabet staan, focus hy dis ons aandag op die idee dat hy beteken om te leer. Nou Lamed is ook een betekenis nou mos van die kameel en, en van, die, van Johannes die doper, maar hy, sy eindelike groot betekenis is om te leer. En omdat sy kop so ver boe uitstaan, beteken hy eindelijk hy is een koppie en boe op hom is daar een waag. Met ander woorde, dit is een mannekie wat boe op een koppie staan. En um, as mens kyk na die letter uh, la met, ek kan nou nie vir julle so wees nie, maar as jy nou sien aan die begin daar waar staan la met, sê jy sien hoe like la met, amper soos die zet wat skyns le, it looks like a zet that lies side on its side. So, the, the bottom side is a cup and the top side is a man standing on the cup. Which means that when we learn the word of God, we should pour it out at the bottom. We should be at the thoughts of God. Now, he says in his word that his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. And we should strive to get our thoughts high as his thoughts is. So that we can pour out at the bottom. Ok, nou leer, maar is een besterenswaardige verskynsel oor die 20ste eeuw christendom soveel beklem plaas op die ervarings van spiritualiteit ten koste van die kennis van Godse woord. Die mense uh, sit baie uh, klem op die ervaring in spiritualiteit um, meer as, as die kennis. It's very important for us to, to have knowledge of the word of God and not just focus on rituals always because it can it can really put us in a groove where we follow in a in a line and then forget what God's mind was for us and we forget the heart of God like we we heard in the beginning balance is belangrijk all by is belangrijk maar die een sonder die ander lei tot skynslopende geloof as dit enigstens geloof is. 
Yeshua was baie bewust van die belangrikheid van al by hierdie gebiede, toe hy die fariseers bestraf het en gesê het, jy dwaal verkeerd, omdat jy die skrif of die kracht van God nie ken nie. Yeshua rebuked the Pharisees, and he said to them that they are doing the wrong by not knowing the word of God or the power of God in Matthew 22 verse 29. He knew that there must be a balance between knowing the, the rituals and the knowledge, the wisdom. You can almost say the wisdom and the knowledge of the word, that you should be action and this should be um, the word. Nou, um, om die rechte balans te, tussen kennis en ervaring te verstaan, moet ons die les leer van die soutkristal wat Yeshua van gepraat het. Sy sout, as sy sout sy sout verloor het, jy is die sout van die aarde, maar as die sout sy sout verloor het, hoe kan dit weer sout gemaakt word? Dit is nie meer goed vir enige iets nie, behalwe om dier mense uitgegooi en vertrap te word in Matthäus 5 vers 13. Now this is something that we we quite wonder about. If salt loses its salt, how do you make it salt again? Because otherwise you just throw it out and it's worth nothing. So this is very interesting. So this is where the saltiness comes in. Where I call it a salty disciple. Natrium. Enig iemand wat basis en chemie bestudeer, weet dat zout uit twee elementen bestaan, natrium en chloride. Uit hierdie twee elementen verkry ons die wetenschappelijke naam natrium chloride. Dit wil nou sê zout. Maar afzonderlijk is hierdie twee stoffe giftig. Natrium is een kristal wat plofbaar raak as dit aan water blootgestel word. Chloride. Chloride is een gas wat doodlik is as dit ingeasem word. As die twee echter goed gecombineer word, is die resultaat plein zout. So you can see that when salt loses its saltiness, that Yeshua actually meant that you break up the, the molecules of the salt and you get two poisonous substances. One which is a gas and one which is explosive. So dit is dan een levensonderhoudende stof wat baie gebruik het soos om kost te geer of ijs te smelt. Salt has a lot of uses, but if you break up the molecules, it has poisonous uses. It will actually poison you. Hieruit moet een belangrike les geleer word. Een of die ander. As een mens net op ervaring concentreer en Godse woord verwaarloos, dan word mens soos natrium, onstabiel, plofbaar en giftig. Aan die ander kant, as men slechts op die bestudering van die skrif concentreer, terwijl hul die geestse werke in hul levens versuim om te functioneer, raak hul een doodlike gas, net soos kloor, of om dit op een ander manier vir hulle op te som, kennis en kracht. As jy kennis sonder kracht het, sal jy opdroog. As jy kracht sonder kennis het, sal jy oplaas. Maar as ik die kennis en die kracht het, sal jy opgroe in een lieflike geer wees. En jy kan ook die ijs dan smelt. <laughs> ons moet dis een gezonde balans hand af, as ons nie ons zout wil verloor nie. So moet ons dan die woord van God ken en dagelijks in ons levens toepas. Enige alternatief is giftig. Met Godse hulp kan ons die zout behou en soos die la met sy boodskap ons leer van die woord van God, met ons hele haar toepas in kennis en in weisheid. Thank you for God, Elohim, that we have the privilege today to come and worship you, to glorify your name. Thank you, thank you that we can call out your word, your scripture into our lives, into existence, Thank you that we can use your word today, not to fill us, but also to fill again. Also to heal us. Also to teach us. Also to give life in abundance. Thank you that we can use your word today as a reward for us. Thank you, Yeshua Masiach, that 
We have the privilege to call you our master, our friend, our Messiah, Lord. Thank you that we have the privilege to say you are the one we love. You are our heart desires. I want to glorify your name. Father, I want to ask for each and everyone in this group. I want to bless them abundantly. I want to bless them in who you are. I want to bless them in your blessings. Father, we wait that your, your face will shine upon us. You will be gracious to us. You will send us, you will be with us in the Shalom. And thank you for each and every one tonight that we can become hungry for your word. Be hungry for who you are. That we can become hungry for your heart desires that you have from us, from the beginning that you have from us. Father, the, the Adam actually that means that, that you are, that we that actually means in the spiritual realm. That actually means that you had a dream about Adam. You had a dream to become your companion. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us to be your companion. Thank you for Surya to know that she can give us some background of who you were, your life that you have lived in the Jewish tradition traditions. But Father, I want to ask that you come and every one of us, that you can just come and heal us. Heal us. Not just our brokenness, but heal us that we can spend more time with you. Heal us in our busy busyness that we can become silent and hear your word, hear your heart, hear your heartbeat. Father, we, we sometimes try to do stuff on our own. This is just going to lay down in our faces and say, God, you are in control. In this Especially this okay. Thank you for God even coming. Just ask that we bring us back so we can trust you alone. Bring us back in this Rokian period that we can use this time to spend more time with you. That we can use ta this time to glorify your name more, to worship more, to dance for your glory. Father God, some of us got left feet, but teach us to dance for you. Teach us to dance for you in your worship. Teach us to sing for you in your worship. And I want to glorify your name. And all the glory will come to you in the name of Yeshua Masiyah, in our glory. Amen. Surika, yeah. Talia, will you please uh, send the, the Hebrew blessing, num number yes. 6247 for us in Hebrew? Okay, yes, of course. Ye berech lecha ve ish melecha. Ya er pana velecha ve yachuneka. Ye sa adunai pana velecha ve asem lecha. Shalom. Shalom shalim. Amen, amen.